Thanks, Tony. You guys have already mentioned the uh, downgrading of the US's uh, credit rating and the plummeting euro, and we've mentioned Australia's tightening purse strings. This is a serious concern about how there's this new round of um, global economic instability will hit Australia. Does the panel think that this uh, turning economic climate will gear Australians towards favouring a stricter liberal economic policy and in turn have a detrimental effect on the already declining popularity of Labor? Let's hear from Noni Hazelhurst first. Well, I just think it's really mischievous, mischievous of Kelly to suggest that, that Wayne Swan and the government are putting their heads in the sand and pretending that what's happening overseas won't have any effect. They're all saying, of course, it's going to have an effect. Nobody's suggesting that it's not going to have an effect. But what they are saying is that we are doing everything we can to correct a decade or more of uh, lacking infrastructure that the, the previous Howard government just ignored. No, they were Labor state a... governments. No, they, no, they weren't state Labor governments. state governments. We're well, talking were. big picture I mean... things here. Um, but I just think it's really important that Australians understand that we are going to have to tighten our belts. Is, it, is that going to have an effect, on, to, to go to the question, is that going to have an effect on the Labor government's popularity? Do you think? Uh, well, I certainly think if the government is continually talked down and if the government's successes are not made more of, uh, you know, I can't imagine why the derisory election campaign that they waged uh, at the last election, wh why that happened, uh, they need to talk more about their successes. And, you know, I've had a lot to do with two-year-olds and I think Australians are heartily <laughs> sick of Tony Abbott's case of the terrible twos where he just says no to everything. <laughs> Uh, it's a good question. I think so. I mean, if you go back to the economic problems of the uh, late 70s, early 1980s, the currency crisis and the balance of payments problems in the early to mid 80s, that kick-started kick a, a round of economic reform with tariff cuts and privatisations and deregulations. And in many respects, those reforms of the 1980s, uh, introduced by Paul Keating and Bob Hawke and backed by the coalition, uh, coalition opposition of Andrew Peacock and John Howard, they, they did a kickstart, not just an economic reform, but it paved the way for today's prosperity. Uh, will it happen again? I don't know. I think that there is a sense of reform fatigue in the community, and I'm not convinced that we have many economic reformers in the Labor Party, especially in the same mould as Paul Keating or, John, or uh, certainly John Howard, but Bob Hawke. I think that's one of the big differences. Uh, I would also make this point, though, that the, Wayne Swan talks about this surplus and he's uh, went on radio this morning maintaining that he will keep faith with this surplus figure. But it's just crazy to keep faith with these figures. Um, a lot of people say that he is uh, subscribing to John Maynard Keynes, the Liberal economist from England. I think he's subscribing to uh, the Dolly Parton School of Economics, uh, an unbelievable figure. Uh, blown out of all proportion, uh, <laughs> with, with no visible means of support. Um, <laughs> this guy is not fit to really run the economy, and I think that uh, it's dawning on people now as the superannuation declines that that is the case.